um, yeah, now we can. Perfect. Yeah. All right, hey guys, hey everyone. Um, Jason, thanks again for this opportunity to present Luhu. Um, I'm greatly appreciated for the fact, for the opportunity. Um, hey everyone, my name is Zwede Hewitt. Uh, my camera doesn't work because I have a gaming laptop, so you guys have to look at, I guess, my handsome picture or this presentation, right? Um, so I, mean, I am the CEO and founder at Luhu. What Luhu is, it's a high impact tech startup and we are tackling a multi-billion dollar market size through the shared economy. Um, Luhu means let us help you. It's a resource, what we, what we are is a unique networking and resource sharing platform, essentially to where you can connect to people in your network for offers and favors, but also pay it forward through helping others. Our aim is to sort of streamline communication along the lines of resources. And the psychology behind it is that being asked for favors strengthen connections. However, through the use of technology over the years, it has been come, become pretty awkward, especially when asking for favors or awkward or offers on social media. So typically, for example, this leads to our problem. Asking for favors is really time consuming with a lot of roadblocks when using technology. So a typical example would be if you go back on Facebook and you look back, let's say 15, 20 years or 10 years to a friend who you haven't spoken to in a long time, but you guys were maybe good friends way back and you ask them for a simple favor, there is a possible chance that they might receive this message and be like, hey, I haven't spoken to Jason in 15 years. Why is he hitting me up now? Only because he wants something. And that is some of the roadblocks that you encounter and now using social media when asking for favors through platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, and they. And that is sort of like the transition into the sharing economy. So what our solution is essentially to streamline the process by matchmaking through connecting persons with resources in an existing network. And resources can be anything from um, your car, which is similar to ride share, um, your home, so accommodation, even now, um, in the post-COVID and digital age, there has been a huge shift towards even um, a transfer of, of, of knowledge and mentorship um, through digital platforms. There are applications where you can connect for services such as babysitting um, and childcare, um, car washes, mobile car washes, you name it. What we aim to provide is essentially an offers platform. Um, and the value is now that users can essentially connect within an existing network and share resources. And in the process, we aim to accomplish organic reconnection of individuals. So now we bypass that awkward barrier of you asking for a favor for someone who may be a friend of old, you know? Our, our essential um, point and differentiator factor between us and the traditional models is the, the level of trust that we aim to incorporate in our platform. Um, through leveraging friends and families and in-network connections and seeing how you are connected to individuals for these particular resources is a one step forward in terms of the trust factor um, that is currently there within the shared economy um, um, networking system and, uh, and, and platforms. But also from a networking standpoint, we plan to put a step forward with regards to our, our security in terms that we plan to have, of course, maybe um, digital IDs or ID, uh, government issued IDs for signs up. So everyone on this platform are gonna be who they say they are. So it's not gonna be like Instagram so you can create like a fake account and all of that. We are starting along um, the, oh, I'll, I'll move on essentially now to the team. So here's a, our great team. I am the co-founder. Um, I'm a former national athlete and sort of serial entrepreneur. I have tried um, and failed in different different industries. Most uh, recently, I was involved in the event space um, where we were doing events locally. I'm also a former national athlete. Most recently, our latest acquisition was Kenroy George. He's our, C our CTO and co-founder. He's a full stack developer and also an entrepreneur who is in the space of digital ID on blockchain technology. Our lead advisor, great guy, David Metzler. So an interesting part of this entire story is during the entire sort of entrepreneurial journey, what I've been able to do is essentially leverage connections 
to get to individuals who may have been of value um, to moving forward on this project. So given that I was not necessarily a technical co-founder, I seek essentially getting good advisors and strategic partnerships to help us grow and scale. Um, our first contact was with Jason Cross, who's actually our startup advisor. We connected about two years ago. Um, cold connection, I was just maybe, I was searching for opportunities in the United States because I was at the time in Trinidad and Tobago um, to essentially help us move forward with this idea. Um, I connected to Jason. We had a good working relationship eventually to where he came on board. Uh, Marcus Boyd, he was a former world junior 400 meter champion, NCA division one champion, and now he's a full stack developer and coder. He was my best man in my wedding. And another part about this story was essentially when I got to Baylor my freshman year, Marcus used to give me rides to practice every day because the stadium was pretty far away from campus. So essentially, there would be hiccups to where some days he may be sleeping or he may have practiced earlier. And I'm there frantically because this is in 2009. I am frantically trying to text message everyone in my network who is going to track practice at that time. Hey, can I get it right? Hey, can I get it right? But the, 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 the interesting fact was that the network was big. We had guys who were on the cross country team. I was in the sprint section. There were guys who I didn't have their phone number but they were going to practice too, but I didn't necessarily have a way to connect with them efficiently. So essentially, being in the same network and connecting for the similar purpose is where some of these early ideas of Lou came as, well, well, yeah, the, the, the early inception ideas of, of when the, of how, how we, we came about with this, this new venture. And essentially, I've been, well, we've been able to build a team of leveraging in network connections to help us uh, move forward with this project. Um, we have a great team essentially to help us um, get to market, but also scale scale um, to, to a, a couple early rounds. Now we can dive into the product. So the main, uh, how we, we describe Lou is essentially is a, it's an algorithm based matchmaking system that connects people with resources of interest, offerings and ratings um, that they're interested in. But our also our major differentiating factor is that we aim to leverage a utility token that unlocks tiers of connections that are outside of your direct network. So now you can connect to friends of friends and second tier connections and third tier connections for a particular purpose. Um, we have been able to um, do some prototyping, some early testing as well. We have our designs on Figma, but we also have um, approximately about 75% of the mobile app already completed. Um, we are building on React Native um, with Firebase on the back end. Um, but as you can see here, are some slides of essentially how the app is going to work. It's going to be a similar, a, a simple sign up, login picture. You input the resources that you're interested in, 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 in finding on the platform. And then also you get essentially a Lu coin. The Lu coin is what is going to connect you out of your network for the purpose to have a conversation with someone for the particular um, offering that you are seeking. So we have chosen a, a, a pretty sleek and, and sort of relatable um, UI UX um, with an up and down swipe up and down as opposed to swipe left and right like the models of Tinder and Bumble. So we are up and down where you are seeing um, offerings that you're looking for and you can simply have the ease of access to click at a button and it takes you to have a potential chat with someone for the offering. The, uh, the, the choice behind this model was, was based off of a lot of research and data that has proven that billions of dollars worth of transactions takes place off of non-transactional platforms such as WhatsApp, where it's essentially just a communication-based platform. So what we are essentially doing is expanding on that model by streamlining the communication. However, we even plan to incorporate a sort of viral feature, um, simple chit chat, to where now you can connect or reconnect with individuals just for the purpose of chit chat, um, or uh, have a, 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 just to find out how someone is going. And this can be turned on and off at a switch of a button. And this solves a problem for WhatsApp, which has become sort of invasive as people use it for different purposes. Um, our competition, 
Um, we have some stiff competition in um, the incumbents like Facebook Marketplace, Airbnb, the Ubers, and stuff like that. But we really believe that we are incorporating um, not only a design, but um, a updated technology and app that is relevant to the current social climate. So we definitely think that we are one step ahead in terms of our, our product. So we essentially have a pretty good shot at in terms of our, our exit strategy. We are potentially looking for a three to five year acquisition by one of those similar incumbents. And that will give us the opportunity and the capacity as well to scale globally. Our total available market is a, it's a $2 trillion market when you think of um, the transport industries and all of that. But Lou is tapping into an, uh, its own its own segment of, uh, of of the shared economy, which has now grown to over three hundred and fifty billion dollar market size. We are aiming to launch in the emerging market of Trinidad and Tobago, scaling to the Caribbean and outwards to um, other emerging markets of the world. And right now, interestingly, due to COVID nineteen the United States of America is actually sort of like an emerging market status with high rates of unemployment. So we definitely think that this application could be a solution to providing another option within the gig economy, but also providing a, a real solution for, for outreach of, of services and trades, and which could as well fuel um, small and medium enterprises and also help stabilize the economy. So we think that our timing is really, really good. We have been incorporated since 2018. So we have, um, we are planning to go to market in October. Thus far, we have been able to uh, build a really strong team, but also um, acquire or make some partnerships with some high value organizations. Our founding team recently graduated from the Draper University Entrepreneurial Program as a top 10 startup where we had the opportunity to pitch to Tim Draper himself. And we are now proceeding with positive engagements, not only with Lou, but also to foster development and resources towards entrepreneurs within the Caribbean region. Um, we have been working with Jason and Prepare for VC for quite some time now, about two years. We were featured twice at Startup and Grind, most recently February 2020, where we were one of the top 300 um, exhibiting companies. And we've also been able to um, been featured on a regional investment TV show called Planting Seeds Caribbean. That is a Shark Tank similar, similar style show. We were able to raise uh, offers equaling 250K via convertible note. Um, COVID sort of pushed back some of our timelines. However, we have been able to receive a letter of interest confirming um, us progressing with closing on that 250K round. Um, thus far, we have been technically sort of bootstrapped. We raised 10K via friends and family. Um, and that was essentially just to show um, capacity to raise funding, but also to get us some early traction and help us um, with some of our developments thus far. So we have a, a traction timeline from ideation in August 2019. You can see clearly some of the steps we have made moving forward. Um, we took a couple of trips across the startup and grind. We also traveled to New York and Boston and California, where we attended several conferences, speaking engagements, but also network with high value individuals to connect essentially to help us with fundraise capacity, but also um, talent and strategic partnerships moving forward pre and post launch. Um, we have been able to connect with some very high value guys outside of just not only Tim Draper, David Metzler, Jason Kalisanis. Um, and these are all guys that have been given positive feedback. We have been in touch with some of the top tier VCs in the world, such as General Catalyst, and they have all shown interest. So we are aiming to head to market in October of this year, we have been able to form strategic partnerships with a couple of state organizations locally and also high value organizations, including the top business hotel, the Hyatt Regency in Trinidad to facilitate a soft launch, essentially um, to build on, a, to <clears throat> develop a early user base of, of executives and early adopters. And we are going to use that as our test and essentially then as we scale outwards to the wider Trinidad and Tobago, then towards the Caribbean and um, beyond. So 
that is essentially what we have been up to. Again, here's my contact information. We are still raising uh, our early round funding. So maybe there's an opportunity to match our first 50K round and we raise a 500K round. So the options are available. We love to hear from you guys. What are your thoughts and feedback and any opportunity to mutually progress? Sounds good. Yeah, great job, Zoide. Um And yeah, great presentation. Uh, we have a couple of questions in so far. Um, again, any additional ones, feel free to submit them. Um, and yeah, I'll ask them accordingly. Um, so I guess to start out here, have you considered creating a cryptocurrency based on these favors? And is that part of, is that part of the system? Yes. So essentially how we're starting is cryptocurrency is, is still a sort of taboo, especially in this, this region. So we are going to have the capacity for you to transfer the utility tokens between accounts. And that would be our entry point. And our strategy is if cryptocurrency becomes uh, a norm or, or mass adoptable, then we shift into uh, a crypto. So it is part of our, our, our potential pillars as we scale. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, as far as being in several different markets, so, you know, US, the Caribbean, other areas, um, what do you have to localize versus what is uh, sort of the same throughout the platform? Okay, so uh, have you considered like no. basically, um, Yeah, I mean, currently yeah, but, other methods, um, you know, what has to be specific to a region versus the same throughout the platform? Well, from a, from a starting point, this is why we are incorporating the capacity to transfer tokens between accounts and that would facilitate sort of like the offset um areas of low cash reserves you know um so that is one of our solutions to to that issue and again that gives us also the capacity to scale into the cryptocurrency which solves the problems of areas that do have low cash reserves or or low access to cash and, and banking systems okay um yeah and then Let's see. So, and as far as, um, do you see users? Yeah. A couple other direct questions there. Um, do you see users being both like both provide or providers and, um, user or, and, uh, users of the favors or do you see people signing up for one side or the other? Like, yeah, how do you see this platform being used? How do I see? Well, well, essentially, we are putting, in, we, we are uh, pushing it as a uh, offerings platform. So, based off of psychology, people are going to sign up on the platform yeah. to see what they can receive. However, we have a reward system in place to incentivize you to offer on the platform as well. So. The more offerings that you make, you build up points that essentially translate into maybe tokens or or the opportunity to get access to something that you are you may be interested in. So it's gonna be you are gonna be rewarded for providing favors and that incentivizes users to place offerings on it. So that is essentially our solution to have that that balance between what you're looking for, but all saying also receiving yeah sounds good um yeah and then the last question here is just around um in terms of yeah what was it oh uh can you also offer business um you know business services on the platform as well or is it more peer-to-peer -peer resources no no so it's going to be it's going to be our our launching pillars are going to be offers services so services are considered um uh sort of like what can be paid for and this is where we are uh utilizing the the models taken from like even whatsapp to where a lot of individuals offer their services um through these communication platforms <clears throat> so 
Yeah, so you are going to be off be able to offer if you're a plumber, input um, your services as a plumber. And in your description, it will be a paid service, you know, and payment can be in the early stage. It can be taken off platform, whether it be cash, PayPal. But we, however, do plan to expand into having um, payment systems in our application to where you can pay directly um, funds to the individual for their services. Perfect. All right. Uh, yeah, great, great job overall. Um, and yeah, again, I'll send a connection email after this with, with for follow ups. Um, we have another 15 minutes or so if you guys want to connect with each other and more of the networking lounge. Um, you can just come on one of the tables and join in video chat there. Um, and yeah, thanks everyone for joining.